Okay, so here there's the Wi-Fi Link 2 by Runcam, their latest digital FPV system using the Open IPC protocol. And if you don't know what Open IPC is, it's pretty much a Wi-Fi based transmission system that's open source. And that means anyone, I mean anyone can contribute to this whole program as far as R&D to make this whole product a lot better. It also reduces costs as well. And at the time of filming, this thing comes in around $69 for both the VTX and the camera. It's really mind blown. It actually is the cheapest digital system currently on the market. So let's open this up and see what you get. And the first thing I see here is the actual camera and the VTX. This thing looks a lot smaller than I expected, especially compared to the original version. Besides that, you have a run cam, looks like a card here. You can go to their website, download the manual, as well as to get the downloads for the firmware for this Wi-Fi Link 2. Below here, we have, looks like some accessories. And this looks like an ethernet cable here to a special plug that goes to the actual VTX. And this will be used to actually configure the files on your actual VTX. There are other ways of doing it, but this is one of the ways to do that. Besides that, we have two antennas here. Looks pretty interesting. Very, very long antennas with a UFL connector. And we'll be using this later on once we install this in our drone. We said that we have a connection here for the port. And this is the actual special connector here to go from the VTX straight to your flight controller. We're seeing this a lot with modern VTX and actually modern flight controls where there's no solder required. One end goes to the VTX and the other one just plugs straight into your flight controller. All right, last but not least, we have a bag here with some hardware, some screws and bolts, and these are to secure the VTX to the frame as well as the camera to the front of the drone. So make sure you keep this in a safe place. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Wi-Fi Link 2. And this thing looks, I have to say, pretty impressive, guys. Uh, this is just a second generation product. And this thing looks a lot smaller and more compact, a lot more complete than the first version here. This looks really amazing. This is actually the power of open source guys where these manufacturers or anyone can just contribute to this and you can see how fast this technology is evolving. It was just a few months ago we had the first version which was a lot bigger. Now this one here is smaller by 30%. The height of this is significantly lower. We're looking at around 17 millimeters compared to the first version which was around 24 millimeters, a lot higher and less polished. Now they're saying this thing here weighs around 30 grams. Let's see if that's true. And we're looking at 28 grams, not too bad. Let's put the antennas on here as well, we'll since we'll be using that and see if that goes up. All right, so 30 grams, that is correct. So 30 grams here with the antenna. And guys, believe it or not, this thing here is actually lighter than the DJI O4 and the O3 system. I have the O3 right here camera, VTX, and 41 grams. So 11 grams more than the open IPC Wi-Fi Link 2. So they've come a long way, guys. And as I said before, this thing looks a lot smaller. Here's the dimensions right here. It looks very similar to the footprint of the O3 air unit. It probably is identical with this fan on here. And we'll talk a little bit about this fan here very shortly, actually right now. And that's the first thing that stands out of this whole VTX system here is this fan on top. It does have a sticker that says Wi-Fi link. It's a little bit different only because a lot of the other digital systems on the market, they don't have a fan on here. Um, I'm always concerned about moving parts with technology only because if you crash your drone, this thing could get caught in something, maybe some grass, or if this does fail for some reason in flight, is your board gonna overheat? So. You know, hopefully in the future we can get rid of this fan. And without this fan here, there, this thing here looks super thin, guys. Now you can easily remove this fan on here because you do have a plug on here and there's the four screws securing this to the actual VTX. But I don't know how the thermal management is on this whole VTX, so it's probably a requirement. And this thing, I'm sure it does get very, very hot. Now next to that plug here for the fan, you have a plug here to actually configure the actual firmware on this VTX. We talk about this ethernet port or cable here with this small port. You can just plug it in, connect this to your computer and use the open IPC configurator to change the settings on this. Now to the right here, you have another plug here and this is the plug here for the harness that goes to the flight controller. Makes this thing here really a plug and play affair. 
you see a lot of modern flight controllers and a lot of modern VTX using that same technology, especially like the one here on the DJ-03, same kind of plug. And I'm hoping, guys, I'm hoping that the wire layout is very similar. So once I install this in my drone, there's really no switching of the wires or me having to restart this to the actual flight controllers. Now talking about this uh, flight controller cable here, this also provides power to this actual VTX. And this VTX is rated between three and 5S, kind of a weird range. Um, typically you see between two and 6S, but I would highly suggest you actually mount this here or plug this into your flight controller. Most modern flight controllers have a nine volt pad and that's the one I'll be using here today as well. Now above that port, we actually have the antenna connections here. This is two UFL connections for these antennas here. I'm kind of excited to put these on, but we said that you also have a plate on here to actually secure the antenna to the actual VTX in case of a crash, it's not gonna get unplugged. We've also seen it before here on modern VTX like the DJI 04 Air unit in 03. And this plate here holds the UFL connectors to the VTX, really cool design right here. Now on the side here, you have a micro SD card slot. And initially I thought this was the slot here for the DVR to record the footage to your memory card. But that is just to update the firmware on the VTX. Now some other VTX uses like a plug or a cable. I actually do like to update the firmware via the SD card. That's a pretty cool feature in here. And maybe in the future, they can add DVR functionality. I don't know if this hardware can support it, but that's probably their next step in the open IPC. Now last but not least on the back here, you have the MIPI cable connector. Very average size MIPI cable. This is around 30 millimeters. Pretty standard, and these can't be transferred to any other manufacturer, so make sure you get the right one for this actual VTX in camera. That leads us to the camera on here, and this is a run cam camera with a Sony sensor, the IMX415 sensor. I do believe that's the same sensor on the Wi-Fi Link version one. No big deal there. This is a 1080p camera, and you have different frame rates. You also have 1080p at 90 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second, which is pretty much the standard frame rate in the FPV hobby, and then 720p at 120 frames per second for that super slow motion there. Now, I do wish in the future we can get 1080p at 120, that'd be the goal, and then you can have some really high quality slow motion footage on here. Now, we said that you have a field of view of 160 degrees, which is pretty wide, guys, to be honest with you. Um, some of the best cameras in the market are around 155 degrees. Now, as I said before, there's no real DVR in here, so you can't really take advantage of that field of view to actually put it into gyro flow or something like that. I mean, that can be done. Um, and we'll probably experiment with that in the future. I guess for FPV, we do like the wider field of view overall. So no complaints on that front. Besides that, this is a standard 19 millimeter camera, which is pretty good and you do have your standard mounts on here so there's really no accommodation required for your existing drone this should just fit into your existing drones now this one here doesn't shoot in any kind of a log profile this believe it or not open ipc is still in the early ages so all those things aren't really developed yet and that makes sense but you can still go into the open ipc configurator and change some of the saturation contrast in the camera. So that's still an option there. Last but not least, we have the heatsink underneath this actual VTX, and it does have the Wi-Fi link logo on here. These fins on here look really nice. And you have the mounting holes for this VTX. This is a 25 and a half by 25 and a half mounting solution. So this can fit multiple drones. Now, some of the other VTX have both, like say 30 millimeters and 25.5 by 25.5. But I do think this is the more common bolt pattern and it can fit smaller drones as well as large drones. So that's a welcome sight overall. All right guys, so overall the Wi-Fi Link 2 looks really good. I'm super excited to mount this in my drone and see how this thing here looks. But what do you think guys? Look at this, this looks like a complete package guys for $69 including the VTX and the camera. At this point, guys, I do think the hardware for OpenIPC looks really good. It's, it's come a long way in a short period of time. I do think what's holding this back, the next step is to improve on the software. There's still a lot of computer programming required to get this whole thing going. They are making some strides in that department. We are getting hopefully some VRX for our goggles to ditch our cell phones and tablets, as well as probably a goggles in the work as well. So we'll see about that in the near future. But the whole thing we wanna see is just plug this into our drone, put the goggles on and have this thing merged together and just change the settings. No configuration required. 
as I said before, I think the software portion is where we need to focus our energy on. All right, guys, so what are my plans for this Wi-Fi Link 2? I'm super excited, guys. So right after this video, I'll be installing this in one of my drones right here. I'll document that in this drone right here. So if you wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button, therefore you'll be notified whenever I do publish that video. We'll take it for a test, my guys. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.